All right, today on Free Field Training, we are doing a live review and durability testing on the Orca Torch. Orca Torch is a flashlight company that makes dive lights and is trying to get into the tactical market. I have exactly zero prior experience with Orca Torch, and when they contacted me, I said, oh, well, I know you make dive lights, so I assume it's gonna be waterproof, but what about running it over with a car or dropping it or any of that? And they said, that should be fine. I was like, then if you want me to durability test it, you can send it to me. We're also live streaming this durability testing on Instagram. Thank you for everyone that is following me on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram and you like to be part of the conversation and see these tests live as they're happening, go over to Instagram, Tommy underscore free field training. There's gonna be a link down in the description of this YouTube video as well. And make sure you turn notifications on for the live streams. So without further ado, let's get into Orca Torch a little bit. So this is the case that the light comes in. On the front, you can see all of its specifications. It's right under a thousand lumens. They say droppable from one meter and two meters underwater, but given that it's a dive light company, I would expect nothing less. Uh, the name of the light is the T20, and uh, it looks like pretty much every other tactical light on the market, but there's a couple things that are different about this I haven't seen from other companies. So let's take a look inside. Uh, the box is pretty standard off-the-shelf boxing with uh, different stickers on it. I've seen a lot of companies using very similar box setups inside. The light itself operates on a tail cap switch that is guarded a little bit, which is nice. It's got a crenulated bezel, which is neither here nor there really for me. And the UI is pretty simple to use. Just click up and down the ramping features that you want. I think most people are going to leave it on turbo mode at 960 lumens. Now, I'm going to put some video in here of what this looks like actually being used, uh, driving down the street, shining at houses. It's, it's more than effective enough for what you would need it to do in your day-to-day -day life. Sets Orca Torch apart from other companies though is instead of not supplying you with a battery, like a lot of companies do, or supplying you with one battery and assuming you're gonna be able to charge it or putting a charging port on the light, they give you a 18650 battery charger, a dual charger, and they give you one battery in the light and a spare with a case. So if you're the type of person that is worried about run time and how long the light's gonna run and whether you're gonna run out of battery, this is a solid, solid option. You can throw this case in your pocket or a backpack or wherever else and know you have a whole nother separate charged battery on top of any dual fuel options you might want to use if you want to use CR123s or something in the light. That's really, really cool, especially for someone that's going to be using this a lot. Let's say you're going to take this camping or use it as a night watchman where you're going to have it on more than off. So let's get to breaking it. So being a dive light company, originally it would really surprise me if Orca Torch didn't make it through the turn the light on full blast and drop it in the water test, but we're gonna see. So this bucket's maybe a foot deep and it fell to the bottom and the light's still on. So we're gonna shake it, give it a little dynamic pressure in there. And not shockingly, the light's doing just fine. We're next gonna try turning it on and off and working the UI underwater to see how good the seals on the buttons actually are. Uh, this is an area where a lot of cheaper lights will fail. Here is the on off function. So we can turn the light on and off underwater. It doesn't seem to cause any problems. And turning the light on, we're pressing and playing with the UI switch no issues there as well. So now we're gonna to go to dropping it and running it over with a car. All right, so next we're gonna do a shoulder height, which for me isn't always that great, but shoulder height, so about five foot off the ground drop test. And we're gonna leave the light on, because really there's no way of telling whether the stuff works if you shut the light off when you're doing them. So about five feet, we'll get it in frame a little. And we'll do another one. Oh, let's take a look. No damage to the glass, so we'll put it up over my head. Again, if you want to see these live, follow me over on Instagram or follow me on YouTube. You know, subscribe and make sure you hit the notifications. You always get the notifications. So do it up over my head. Yep, still on. 
still on, window's still good. Now it's time to run it over with a car. And finally, in our durability testing, we're gonna be running this over with the front wheels of my wife's Dodge Grand Caravan. So, pretty much normal family car type of thing. Not a semi or a fire truck or anything, but if you were to drop this in the middle of the street and someone was run over with a car, is it realistic to believe it's gonna make it? And that's what we're looking at today. So we'll turn it on and shove it right yonder under the wheel and we'll see if there's anything left of it after. All right, it's off. The question is, is it off because it got pushed off or off because it got broke off? Oh, here we go. Just got pushed off. So, uh, we're gonna have to run this over several more times, see how long it takes before it breaks. Running. We can't have that. Still running with the car parked on it, on the lens. That's fairly impressive. All right, so everybody on the Instagram live feed that is watching this live right now, again, check out my Instagram if you haven't already, turn the notifications on. They voted on how to finally destroy this light. All the realistic testing is done. And they voted for me to drop a concrete block on it, but I don't have a concrete block. What I do have though, is an absolutely enormous rock. I'm guessing that it weighs about 80 pounds. Hopefully I don't drop it on my own feet. Well, what I've learned from this is that I think there's a void underneath the concrete here in my porch that I should take care of might be why it's all subsiding, but the light is still running. Right, we cracked the lens. Cracked the lens. But the light's still running. Turn on autofocus so you guys can see the broken lens here. You see the crack in it. And the light has bent out. I'm sure it is not waterproof anymore. But it still runs. The PD is really insistent that I call them back. All right, we're gonna drop it again. That might have done it. <laughs> it still lights up. It still works. This light still works. It's crushed flat. The lens is completely blown out. It still works. Um, yeah. So that's my wrap up. I crushed this thing flat and it still works. You see the difference in the size of the lens now? Still operates. Orca Torch. I give it a thumbs up. 
that's that's the best we've gotten so far out of any of these tactical lights. So uh, until next week, you guys be safe and take care of each other. Hey, thanks for watching Free Field Training on YouTube. While you're here, why don't you go check out one of our other videos, or you can head on over to the Patreon and see how you can get your name put on the videos like these fine folks listed over here. There's also some exclusive content on Patreon that just shows you kind of behind the scenes like you're seeing now. We'll see you guys next time.